Welcome back designers. Today we're going to have a look at the eyedropper tool. Now its base functionality is to be able to grab colors and put them into different objects. So if you've got two squares, two different colors, and you want them both the same, you can use the eyedropper tool, simple click and you've got it. But did you know you can also just grab pixel elements out of things? You can also copy the appearance. So if you have one shape that has a drop shadow or has a distortion on it, you can actually take those things by using the eyedropper tool as well. So let's hop over to Illustrator and I'll show you a few examples of this. All right, here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator. So I went ahead tonight before we started and just threw together a quick realtor logo. Figure if we had a real world example, it might help with the learning process. If you like this, let me know down in the comments and I'll see what I can do on some future videos to include this kind of style. So we all know the basic functionality of the eyedropper tool. I'm gonna go ahead and hit I on my keyboard. That gets us to the eyedropper. You can also click this little icon over here. So the basics of this, if I control click on this shape to grab it and I want it to be this blue, I just hover over the blue and I click. I think pretty much everybody understands that function. Do the same thing with this one. Click on the gray and I've now got my two colors for my logo transferred over here and I can go ahead and add in my tones or my color codes that I need to for the client. But what if I want this font to show up down here? I can click on this text, grab my eyedropper, and I can click on that font. And it's going to grab everything to do with that character. So it grabs the font family, it grabs the font style, it grabs the font size, and it also grabs everything to do with the paragraph, including the alignment. We can change all of that, and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Now there's two different modifier keys that we can use with the eyedropper, there's shift and alt. So with shift, I can grab what's called a, a pixel point eyedropper. Right now, if I were to take this and just use my regular eyedropper over this gradient, it's gonna grab the whole gradient. Well, I don't want that. I just want a shade of the blue here that's a little bit darker than what I'm working with, or even a little bit lighter than what I'm working with. So I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna click right in here and it just grabs just that blue. If I want the purple, I can grab that. Now here's the glitch with this one. If I click and highlight and grab the full gradient and now try to hold down shift, it grabs a different portion of it and it actually changes the gradient itself without grabbing just that single color. So if you ever do that, you can just back out of it, Command Z or Control Z on your keyboard, get back to the regular color, hold down Shift, and then you can pick whichever single color you want. Alt actually sends a color. So I've got this one highlighted, and if I do my eyedropper and do Alt click on here, normally what this would do, because this one's highlighted, it would grab the gray and make this one gray. Instead, it's actually going to grab the blue from this one and transfer it over to this one. So if you want to send a color to something else, you can actually use the Alt key. So let's look at these last couple of examples. And for this, we're going to need to make a quick change. Because right now, if I take this and do my eyedropper, all I'm going to get is the color. Well, I don't want that. I want more than the color. And same with this one. I want this actual shape. Because if you look at this, we go Command-Y. This is the shape on that. So what I've done is I actually took sort of that rounded oval shape or tombstone shape and I went up to path, envelope, distort, and I did a make with warp on it. And then I did just a bow. So from these objects, we can grab those things. We just need to make a quick change. Like most of the other tools we've been working with, we can double click on the eyedropper. And from here, we can change number one, our raster sample size. So are we doing a point sample, a three by three or a five by five average? And are we grabbing different aspects and applying different aspects? Well, if you notice, appearance is unchecked. But if I click off appearance on both of these and hit OK, now if I highlight this and I dropper it, I actually get the drop shadow over onto here. And we'll get the same thing with this. I get that conversion. Now, the only thing, if you notice, that it doesn't grab 
is those rounded corners. All right, that's it for the eyedropper. Who knew you could do so many things with one little tool? Don't forget, a lot of these tools, you can double click on that little icon over in the toolbar to get more options or to add or subtract various things from the functionality. So I hope you enjoyed this one, designers. So now I gotta get back to work and decide what tomorrow's video is gonna be all about. Get out there and create something and I'll see you in the next one. I don't know if you can hear my cat in the background. Can you hear that? All right, that's it. I need bigger hands for this lens.